Thank you, Polly. And welcome to Farage here at GB News. It's just after seven o'clock. Now, first of all, a big thank you, because this is a team effort. You may recall last night the story I exposed about the international student visa abuse, breach of the regulations. That came from one of you viewers who dug into the story and then let us know about it, came on to me. So if you've got any other scandals, abuses you think that need investigating, need looking at us, by us presenters and our team, let us know. That's how we can be a great team effort and hold people to account. Now, first up, talking of holding people to account. So some new data has come out of the Home Office. It doesn't appear to happen very often, and when it does, it's rarely good news. Just listen to this. So we've had, since 2020, across the English Channel, some 111,000 people have crossed the Channel. Have a guess how many have actually been assessed, denied, and returned. 5%, 4%, keep going down, my friends, just 1% in three years. And here is a graph that I'll come to in a second. But just 1% of people have been returned, of which 0.7% have been returned to Albania. The Prime Minister's very proud of that. The fact that I broke the story last August, nothing to do with it, of course. But, so that means just 0.4 of 1% of non-Albanian migrant arrivals in the last three years have been returned from where they came. That doesn't seem not to me like very strong performance. But the graph that hopefully will appear on the screen is a different graph. This is the acceptance rate, I hope you can see it, over the last 20 years of asylum applications, which shows extraordinarily, back in 2004, the acceptance rate for asylum applications was less than 20%, less than one in five. 2018, that had risen to 33%. Last year, 2022, right up there, just under 80%, about 76%. So it's more than trebled in the last 20 years. So you might ask, what on earth is going on there? And that's what I'll be digging into with my first guest. But I've got to ask you folks, you at home, what do you think is going on? I mean, asylum seeker applications have trebled in 20 years. Why? Who's to blame? That is my audience question for you to dig into. You know the email, farage at gbnews.com or use the hashtag. So my first guest is Richard Bartram, senior immigration solicitor to discuss this. Uh, Richard, a very good evening. Thanks for being with us. So, Thank you. I mean, this, uh, this data coming out of the Home Office, it's not great performance, is it? Let's be honest. Returning just 1% of those who've arrived in the last three years, uh, outside the Albanians, 0.4%. Feels yes. to me that the Home Office is not really doing the job that we're paying them to do. Well, there are. I think there are a number of um, answers to that. Firstly, uh, as regards the Albanians, they form 25% or there thereabouts of people returned, and that's because, as uh, I think you said, you perhaps broke the story. Or, but but anyway, we have a, an agreement with the Albanian authorities to facilitate that. And perhaps that's what the government are trying to imitate with Rwanda. But Rwanda isn't, isn't Albania, so we can come on to that in come a moment. Come on to that, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but, what, I mean, why so slow? It, it feels to me that that is... I mean, that, that's just hopeless, frankly. Um, it's... The, someone may have been told to get the backlog down, and a way to get the backlog down is to um, grant... Um, you came up with a figure of 80 per cent. For my little group, my little um, company, we will be expecting 95, 96, 97 per cent. Of applications accepted? Of, of my, in my office, yes. Wow. So basically that means you're doing a fantastic job on behalf of your clients. Or that the Home Office... Or that the Home Office are, 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 uh, are, are not competent, not fit for purpose. So actually that's got to the rub of it, because what you're really saying is that perhaps over the last 20 years, the immigration lawyers have got better and better at interpreting the rules, the regulations, making an ever stronger case. Essentially, you're doing a better job for your client, the asylum seekers, the arrivals, 
and the Home Office is, is not as competent as it was 20 years ago at resisting those, those applications and appeals? Um, it takes a great deal of, uh, of time, money and manpower to fight a case, to refuse someone, to go to court, etc. Um, is there equality of arms? Are there more lawyers than immigration officers? I don't know those statistics. But something significant has changed in the last 20 years to see a trebling of the rate of acceptances. In, in, or it's just simple political change. Well, they, it could be... There'll be a significant impact on the, the war in Syria and the rise of the Taliban in Afghanistan. Those are just geopolitical factors which are going to drive refugees. Um, the other factors um, may well be, uh, I speculate, uh, an, a, a, a wish to just bring the backlog down, to, um, to clear the decks for what comes next, which is inadmissibility, and that's something completely different from sending people to Rwanda, inadmissibility of claims for people who've come from third countries, so to free up the time to deal with the people coming and just essentially to park the people who have already arrived. Um, I'd like to be a fly on the wall in some of those discussions uh, within the Home Office. And, and something significant yeah. happened this year because at the beginning of the year, the Prime Minister said he was going to get the backlog down. The backlog was well over 100,000. I mean, I think it was near 150,000 and rising. Uh, and we've now got two immigration ministers, one for lawful immigration and one for unlawful, because the job is so big that essentially one immigration minister wasn't good enough. Um, but the number that they've reduced very proudly, Tom Persglove yesterday announced the, uh, that they'd got the backlog down from 92,000 at the beginning of the year, sort of long stayers, down to 18,000, sort of a record grant rate. But it seemed to me that it's almost like they're granting an amnesty for huge numbers just in order to meet their target. Is there any... Or am I being a bit harsh there? You, you would never get uh, anyone from the Home Office to use the word A, the A word, an amnesty word, not for, <laughs> for many a year. Um, and there, was, uh, there were some things called backlog clearance, which were effectively... That sounds like an amnesty to me. It, well, it was never called an amnesty. Come on, word. let's be honest amongst friends. <laughs> a lot of files were, par were found in a large car park. Well, talking, this... about, talking about finding and losing, yes. the Home Office have admitted, of course, that basically they lost some over 17,000 asylum seekers who didn't turn up for their Zoom interview. Yep. And because they didn't turn up for the second time, they just basically wrote them off, cancelled the file, stuck it in the bin. Um, well, that, that, that is an increasing problem, and it's a problem for, for both the asylum seeker and the government in the long term. Um, if a letter goes out, and, and this is a very realistic scenario, uh, on a Monday saying you've got an interview on Friday to an asylum seeker who may... Well, was like, more likely than not not to speak English, and he misses it. He's sent to a hotel with 200 rooms. Um, the next thing that happens is his asylum claim is discontinued, or she's... Is discontinued. But you can't, just, you can't just ignore people and, and, and abandon them and then just basically they just drift into the system and start working illegally, being housed illegally. You, you can it's if you want to get the backlog down. You can if you want to get the backlog down. You've heard it here, folks. That's what's going on. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's just... How can this be acceptable? Well, it, it isn't, because at the end of the day, these people will be encountered and we'll be back in the system. In the interim, they are, as you put it, um, sleeping in the park or working illegally. They'll have no other choice until they can get back in and they say, I simply didn't receive your yeah. invitation letter. But if they've, if they've essentially written it off, which was what uh, Sir Matthew Pry 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 uh, Rycroft, sorry, he indicated, then they don't bother again. They've got the backlog down, they don't care. It feels to me there's, a, there's just a, a lack of... A lack of oomph, a lack of effort, a lack of care on behalf of British citizens. Well, um, it, it's a matter of priorities. If we are going to be driven by essentially what I'm going to suggest are sound bites, get the backlog down, stop the boats, rather than come to a joined up asylum system deciding who are we going to protect and who are we not going to protect, and then let's focus on the ones we are going to protect and take every action that within the power of the state, if that's what the, the Parliament and the British people want, uh, to, to remove the people that we are not going to protect. It was so predictable. When the Prime Minister said he was going to get the backlog down, we all sort of knew what would happen. There would be a rush through, there would be a sort of a, a, a backdoor amnesty. We've had 39,000 claims granted in the year to September, the highest since records began back in 1984. And then all... it's The whole Rwanda thing, just to finish on, Richard, is, it's, yeah. it's like a sort of 
dead cat distraction on the side. We spent all that money. Just imagine if we'd spent all that money on a top quality, world beating processing team that processed everybody within a few weeks. Well, £390 million so far is a fair wedge of money. 290, yeah. Uh, 290, I'm sorry. I'm sure it'll be 390 before oh, long. Don't. <laughs> Given that it's we, unbelievable. we have promised to provide legal assistance and all and sorts all to Rwanda, and that, that bill's only going to go up. Um, I mean, the, you, you said uh, dead cat. I, I would say three-legged donkey in the Grand National. Um, Maybe what yeah. we should be doing, actually, is basically seconding a whole load of you immigration lawyers to replace a bunch of folk in the Home Office to do the job properly, it seems to me. Maybe that's too much like common sense, Richard. Well... Once no, that, I'd love that, but no. Seriously, um, let's decide who, what kind of categories of refugees, what refugees we want, or can take if, if it's about society. So let's just say um, the French will take fifty thousand refugees from a French-speaking country, and we will take fifty thousand from uh, uh, from, from southern countries. Cameroon who are we, anglophiles. We, the, the bottom line is, we've got to be competent and we've got to be determined to do the job properly. Richard Bartram, thank you so thank much you. indeed for, for your thoughts on that. There we are, my friends. It seems to me that we've basically got a quasi amnesty program going on in this year to get the Prime Minister's target to be achieved.